Welcome to Under the Hood, the faculty position series. May these tips propel you along your journey. Welcome back to the faculty position series. And here is the part six discussion about the on-site interview that is held in person. So congratulations again if you've made it this far in the application process. And we will jump right into the details about this in-person on-site interview. So the purpose of this in-person interview is very much the same as the purpose for the virtual interview with a few additional um, points. So be sure to listen to part four of the series where I really talk about the purpose of each component of a full interview. Now, in addition to what we discussed in part four, um, the purpose of your in-person full interview is so that you can preview the facilities. So what do the lab spaces look like? What do the graduate student offices look like? What do the faculty offices look like? Will your lab be in the same uh, building as your office? Will you teach in the same building as you conduct research? Um, so these are things that you can discover at the in-person interview that is pretty much impossible in the virtual interview unless someone gives you a camera tour. Another thing that people tend to do when they are flown out to the in-person meetings is they ride around the town and explore different neighborhoods that they are likely to want to rent in or buy a house in. So um, it could be a good time to do some reconnaissance on relocation aspects of this, this job search. So once again, please listen to part four of this series um, to hear about the purpose, once again, of your full interview. So the one of the main differences between a virtual interview and the in-person interview is the schedule and logistics, obviously. So in your in-person interview, there will be about one to three days of in-person meetings. And unlike your virtual interview, these days will be probably fuller. I call them eight to eight days. So 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. Because now more people will have a chance to meet with you and you will have meals and meetings over meals. So once again, the meeting and seminar schedule will be the same as your virtual visit. And now you're adding in breakfasts, lunches, and dinners, all right? So one thing I recommend for these meal meetings is to show up on time. Um, study your itinerary ahead of time so that you can know where you need to be, whether it's downstairs in the lobby of your hotel whether you need to be meeting out on the curb, um, put in the phone numbers, plug them into your phone for your contacts who may be hired or scheduled to pick you up and bring you from one place to another. And so you'll really want to pay attention to your schedule here. Um, one thing I recommend is that you limit any alcohol consumption at these um, meals, at these meal meetings. Um, although it may be open to you, you really need all your faculties and you need your stamina for these interviews. And alcohol is a depressant and so you're going to be working against yourself if you choose to um, partake during an, an interview. Then you want to maintain high levels of professionalism throughout the entire process. That means if you are picked up from the airport by a scheduled chauffeur, you want to be wearing your candidate hat um, during that ride. Be very kind and considerate. 
um, you want to be professional at your breakfast, lunches, and dinners, and then um, you want to keep that hat on until it's time for you to head back to the airport. Again, the schedule is provided ahead of time and travel is usually pre-arranged by the hosting department. And so while you're on travel, you're going to want to keep record of your incidentals and your expenses. So any extra meals you had to pay for, um, perhaps parking and ground transportation in your home city. Um, and these things are likely to be reimbursed. You may want to ask ahead of time before you leave for the trip um, exactly what the department will be willing to cover so that you can moderate your spending while you're out of town. The next thing I'll talk about are the meetings and seminar in an in-person setting. So they're pretty much the same as how I described them in the virtual uh, world, except there are a few more nuances and recommendations that I have for an in-person interview. Number one, um, you'll be navigating a new space. So you may be asked to be to show up at a certain building without an escort at the first start of your interview. And so you'll need to pre-study the campus map ahead of time. And I think Google Maps, if you're if you're walking from a bus stop or if you're walking from your hotel to the first building, the Google Maps um, walking path for most places that I've been is pretty accurate. So time that walk appropriately and give yourself about 10 minutes of leeway for you to show up um, before the start of your first interview. And so I find that this added layer of uncertainty and unfamiliarity is um, a little bit of a distraction from staying focused on relaying your your information about research, teaching, and service, and generally focusing on putting forth a good impression. So if getting lost is one of your weaknesses, you will want to study the campus map, get familiar with building names so that you won't be so disoriented during your interview. The next thing I'm going to recommend is that you ask for a restroom break whenever possible. Um, that gives you a chance to relieve yourself, to take a deep breath, get some water, um, because sometimes when you're on site in person, people forget that you may need a break. There may be breaks built into your schedule, but use those breaks, make sure you use them accordingly to recoup, um, refresh and 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 maybe say a couple mantras to yourself to relax. I also recommend wearing comfortable footwear. Um, I know us people that like to wear dresses. We sometimes wear shoes with a bit of an incline or a heel. I just don't recommend it. Wear your flats um, because if you're moving all around campus, you're gonna get tired. The next thing I recommend um, for your in-person meetings is um, to have a few printouts of your full CV. Um, so when you're sitting across from somebody in a one-on-one -on -one meeting, you can just lay it on their desk and say, you know, and you can talk through your CV um, or you can leave a copy for someone that may be a potential letter writer at some point or a, a, a close collaborator. Um, that could be helpful to, to jog people's memories in case they haven't been able to review your materials ahead of time. Um, you'll also want, you may want to put together a portfolio of visuals, of your papers, of lecture materials that you can, that can serve as a visual aid when you're talking one-on-one -on -one with people. So I remember in an in-person on-site interview that I had my laptop open, I was explaining some things and clarifying things from my seminar. And you know, I would diverge to talk about my website, to talk about whatever I felt strengthened the conversation with whomever I was talking to. But a good old fashioned handheld portfolio of documents could also help your case. The last thing I recommend for your in-person seminars is to use the preparation time wisely. So 
usually they give you about 20 to 30 minutes of a break but right before your seminars to hook up your laptop, make sure that your transitions are correct, making sure that your animations are correct. So while you have done this the night before or a couple of nights before, please use the prep time to make sure that this is correct on the system. Now, make don't be afraid to advocate for yourself um, as well. If you know that you're soft spoken, please ask for a lapel mic if they have one. If you have to use a handheld mic, you should do that. You may want to also bring your own slide transition uh, pointer um, with you. Um, if it connects to your computer via USB, you'll want to do that. I also recommend bringing with you the necessary adapters for visual display and carry extra HDMI cords with you, USB port um, adapters and things like that as a backup in case their, their equipment isn't compatible with your computer. In case you forgot your flash drive, you'll want to build in redundancy to make sure that there's multiple copies of your presentation materials scattered about. You also want to keep updated copies on any cloud servers so that if you if your laptop dies, something gets stolen, something gets doused in water, um, you can pull your materials from like your online Dropbox, your Google Drive, so that you know these emergencies won't derail your entire interview. So build in redundancy with your equipment, with your adapters, and with the copies of your materials. So that's those are my tips for the meetings and seminars. So this wraps up my tips for the in-person on-site interview. Um, I recommend that you review part four because this gives you, that, that particular part gives lots of clarity around the purpose and the contents that you need to have in your interview materials. Um, I wanna reiterate that this part of the interview is about stamina, like, you know, how, how do you fare in um, a fast paced environment where you're meeting lots of people and you're having to, you know, use quite a bit of your brain um, all day to relay information, meet new people. And it, it is an exercise in stamina, but I know you can do it. Stay focused, stay positive, um, make sure that your health is on point, your eating is on point. Try not to, um, eat things that make you sluggish, like sweets and um, pastry products, um, carry a, a protein bar with you when you are um, walking around campus. You really want to um, manage your energy well during these interviews because you will be exhausted. Okay, so if I've left out anything or if you have any clarifying questions, be sure to put them in the comment section below. I'll see you in the next one.